In my HHKB review, I was pretty critical about the layout. I said that the supposed improved ergonomics argument doesn't really stand, and that you should get a Hasu controller so that you can remap a layout that makes more sense, like the poker. I think I might not have been very fair to the HHKB. Because I got that one with the Hasu, I never really tried very hard to learn the layout, but after the fact, I found that I really liked the placement of the backspace, so I decided to make that change for all my boards that support it. With that done, I got to wondering if there was other good things about the layout that I just didn't give a fair chance for, so with the Type S, I decided to try it stock. Also a contributing factor is that I joined the Rama M60A drop, and it only comes in the HHKB layout, so I better get used to it before it ships. So one thing I'm going to do for this retry is to think about the HHKB as a completely different keyboard than what I've been using. So far, I've been most used to 60% keyboards that go with the general layer layouts from the poker, namely with the arrow keys on IJKL. However, trying more limiting keyboards like the plank or the minivan made me realize that this layout can't really be generalized across all boards. So I'm going to try to use the HHKB layout like it was meant to be used, instead of trying to mold it to fit what I'm comfortable with. So like I said before, the position of the backspace key is very logical, and I find it really easy to get used to. The second point to address is the control key. On the HHKB, this key is mapped to where the caps lock key would have been. This is actually not too difficult to get used to. I think there is a very small improvement in ergonomics in the finger positions for control combinations that use the QWERTY row or the number row. The control key's position introduces a problem with the arrow keys. My workflow requires a lot of navigation and line selection and such, and I found it convenient enough to use IJKL for my 60% boards where the function key is mapped to caps lock. But now that the caps lock is mapped to B control, I need to use the function key to the right of the right shift. The location of the arrow keys is comfortable enough. I don't have to stretch my fingers at all to reach them, but the weirdest part is that they reside in three rows instead of the usual two. This is going to take some getting used to, but it seems doable. Do note that technically there is more movement between typing and navigating since you need to shift your right hand about three units to the right and one unit down to start using the arrows. This is less efficient than the poker layout which allows arrow key access with no hand movements. There are definite trade-offs though. One sort of advantage that I can think of is that because pressing the function key is moved to the right hand, the left hand can do less stuff for operations that need several modifiers. For example, selecting multiple lines of code is something I do pretty often, and this is done with the up or down arrow keys while holding down control and shift. On a traditional 60% board, I would need to hold down control, shift, and function all with my left hand, which can get kinda clunky. I often resort to pressing down both control and shift with my left pinky, which feels a bit awkward. By contrast, on the HHKB, the left pinky only presses down on the shift with the left ring finger on the control key. This feels a little bit better because it sort of distributes the load across the hands. I don't know if I'd say that this is a huge advantage, since a lot of people don't have to perform multi-modifier operations too often, but it's something. Another advantage to using the HHKB layout on the HHKB, rather than forcing a different one, is that you can have the GUI and ALT keys in the places that you expect them. By moving function keys to a completely different location, the two modifiers to the left of the spacebar are exactly what they should be in a regular keyboard. Previously, when I was forcing my layout with the Hasu, I had the leftmost modifier set to be control and the one next to it as alt. I moved the win key to the right of the spacebar. I found two problems with this. First is that the control key being shifted over this much felt really awkward to use. The second is that I do use the win key a lot for stuff like searching and window snapping, and having it in a completely different place reduced my usage of these useful time-saving operations. So once I got around to getting used to the layout over the course of a month, it was actually pretty easy to use. I was able to easily switch back and forth between this and a more traditional 60% since I mentally treated them as vastly different experiences. I don't know if I like it so much that I'd start getting custom keyboards in this layout if other options are present, but who knows what will happen in the future. So I think my initial criticisms for the layout of the HHIB was not too fair. The missing keys only become a waste of space if you try to force whatever other layout on it. I still don't think this layout is significantly more efficient or ergonomic than other boards, but I will change my stance to say that it's completely usable. So this is just a reminder that you should probably give other things a chance before passing judgment. I know that this can be kind of hard in this hobby where the quote-unquote other thing is a $200 keyboard, but the advice still stands. 
And I guess by extension, this is also a reminder that as a reviewer, I'm inherently biased, and the videos are a presentation of opinions, not necessarily facts. You can safely assume that I'll be pretty consistent in my bias, but preferences do change, so keep that in mind. Thanks for watching, and if you liked the video, like it. This is going to be my last piece on the HHKB directly, so if you are getting sick of this keyboard, we'll be back to our regularly scheduled MX-style programming next time.